to be here it's all the way live and in living color and you know we have been celebrate celebrating black women in ministry we're leading with the real thrive black women in ministry initiative a grant from the lily endowment which we are so grateful in cooperation with the union baptist church in the village of harlem so welcome today i have all the way live people today. We have Dr. <laughs> Viola Hicks, Dr. Liz Reyes, Dr. Marjorie Duncan Reed, and Pastor Avery, Camille Avery Harris, all of the above. And we welcome you and we greet you with joy today. Thank you for coming. How are you feeling today? I'm going to start with you, Pastor Hicks. What's it like? How are you feeling being a Black Women in Ministry Thrive Fellow today? I am feeling wonderful. I serve a church in uh, Connecticut and I did not really have any um, anyone except, you know, volunteers uh, helping us. And so now I have a mentee and I am elated. That We're so you. happy to have you too. And Pastor Liz Rios, we have known each other for years in many different walks. Our ministries really began around the same time, but you are blessing a lot of people as not only a planter yourself, but helping those who want to be planted. Tell us about what you're doing in ministry and how you feel being part of the BWIN program. Well, I mean, I feel totally honored to be asked to be part of this. You know, I think that, you know, a lot of people don't really understand um, when, when Latinas are embracing their um, blackness. So, you know, especially for me, I was, you know, you know me from way back when I was already saying Latina before I even knew my father's heritage that his father and his family came to, from the, the diaspora to Puerto Rico, to a part of Puerto Rico called Loisa, where most um, uh, slaves went when they went to um, that uh, particular island. So to me, you know, I've always embraced it and now I embrace it even more, but, um, I do something that um, is really important, I think, and it's this. I help black and brown church planters start justice-oriented churches. And um, if we look at what's happening in our society today, we can see why that's so important. Yeah, really a need for it. So we're just glad that you're there. And Pastor Marjorie Duncan Reed, I think you have been to every event I have ever given in ministry and in life. And it's so delighted. You also received the Shiro's Award from the Pro Voice. Yes. So we're just glad you are a living Shiro. Tell us how it feels for you to be a Black Women in Ministry Thrive Initiative Fellow. It is exciting. And I, I can't tell you how exciting it is. I have to share that when I first met you, when I first saw you back in 1984, my husband said to me, follow her. Mm. And that's why I have been at everything I could possibly be at. Well, we're so you. happy to have so you. So this I is followed you actually too. wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> we're so glad to see you. We're going to come back because we have a whole lot of life lessons and stories we're going to share with all of us with Pastor Avery Camille Harris. Mm -hmm. Wow. Welcome. Philadelphia, Church of God in Christ. Yes. It normally mm. hasn't had a whole lot of leadership from women. How does it feel to be in the Black Women in Ministry Thrive Fellowship? Oh, wow. Firstly, I am so delighted to be here with you all on today. Ambassador Sujay, amen, a legend in your own right. I'm just so elated to be here along with these powerful women of God. And I think that it's just so amazing that God has me in this platform. It has been so um, oh, overwhelming, but a good overwhelming oh. that I'm with these powerful women of God. I just can't wrap my brain around it every time I think about it. It's just a great, a great journey that I'm on now with the Black women in ministry. Well, we're going to wrap our arms around you as you're wrapping your brain around it because we're so excited to have you. And you need to thank Bishop Felton, who I asked for someone from the Church of God in Christ ministry. And so he's been a real great friend and leader for all of us. Now, all of us have mentors, but we now have the opportunity to be the first generation of Black women who can mentor a whole nother generation of Black women. So tell us, 
who is your mentee? What is the assignment that she is doing and how it feels to be pouring in to the life of another young Christian woman leader? Dr. Reed. My mentee is Lisa Du Bois. Um, I met her through one of the schools and uh, she is a delight to be with me. Uh, I didn't have any associate ministers. I was there by myself in a mm -hmm. senior congregation. And so with this pandemic, trying to learn all the technology and she has all the experience with that. So her assignment is with me has to do with technology, Zoom, the, uh, the website and helping our members be able to get on these things. And see, isn't it amazing because we did Zoom a year ago yes, coming we out did. of our retreat, not knowing yes. how to Zoom the rest of our lives. So <laughs> it's really great. So I'm a boomer. Uh, Pastor Liz, what's it like to have your mentee and pour into her? And, and what are you hoping will happen for her? What's her assignment? Well, um, I, my mentee is Andrea Booker, and she actually is a manager for the Redeemer City to City program in New York City. And what she does is similar to what I'm doing, um, but she's doing it much um, earlier in life. And it's helping church planters plant uh, churches in New York City. She does a lot of training. But I, what I love about this opportunity is that I never really had um, you know, a mentor. And to have someone so early on in your ministry career uh, be able to, to, to speak into her life. We just had a, a conversation yesterday and we were talking about leadership development and I've been super transparent with her and, and she with me. And her role right now is to do the same thing with other women who are in church planting, which um, most people already know that there's not that many um, women in church planting. So uh, our first assignment was to have her uh, put together a Facebook Live um, or, um, um, uh, showing. And March 23rd, we have our first one with other uh, leaders from the United States that are women in church planting. And we're going to be talking about imposter syndrome. I love it. And you got to give us credit. We're planning the scene. We want all of you to be all over the world with your ministry yeah. and what you're doing. Pastor Piola Hicks, what's it like? Who's your mentor? What's her assignment? And what's it like to pour into another woman? Uh, it is so exciting. My uh, mentee is a woman named Reverend Christina Sammy. She is from actually the Maryland area. And what's so awesome about this experience is that she contacted me years ago um, asking me about mentorship. And I really wasn't in a position really then to offer her anything. And so when I called her to tell her about this opportunity, she was over the moon. I mean, she was so excited and saying how God had orchestrated this entire um, situation. So I'm excited for her. She's excited with me. We are working on a project called Digital Discipleship. I've been wanting to uh, really be more in the online space for a long time. And she is the exact right person. We are uh, right now working on a Linton uh, discipleship uh, program that we are putting out in uh, the digital space. And so we're inviting uh, people to just join with us in a devotional each day during the 40 days of Lent. She's a, a godsend. Amen. So 40 days of Lent. And the key is you're in Connecticut. Your mentee is not. And the key with technology is that God has definitely orchestrated this digital space because we have different men different mentors and mentees in different spaces from different states. But you're in the right place at the right time and so is your mentee. And we hope we continue to give them a shout out because they're doing a great job and we're excited. We're gonna be right back. If you've just joined us, you're with Live with Sue J. We're all the way live in a living color. We're celebrating the lives of black women in ministry who are part of the Real Thrive Initiative with the Lilly Endowment in cooperation with Union Baptist Church. Give us a thumbs up, subscribe, share it with someone, but you stay right there, we'll be right back. Hey, thank you for joining us. You know, COVID is a tough time and a lot of people are feeling the pressure of stress of life. But I have a book that I think will be a blessing to you. It's called Too Blessed to be Stressed. And the subtitle is Words of Wisdom for Women on the Move, but it's also for men on the move. And it's scriptural steps to bouncing back from burnout. I encourage you to get it. It's still a bestseller some 10 years later. You can get it on Amazon or wherever books are sold online, but too blessed to be stressed. I want you to know you are too blessed to be stressed. And so please obtain a copy. I hope it will be a blessing to you.
Hi, and welcome back to Live with Sujay. In case you're just joining us, we are celebrating Black women in ministry. And we are delighted to have four dynamite. You know, the word dudamus in the Bible means explosive, yeah. dynamite. We have explosively blessed women with us today. So I want to continue this conversation. And thank you so much for participating in our wonderful initiative. And again, thanking the Lily Endowment and Union Baptist Church. So now you, what do you do for fun? What we're trying to present is the human side of ministry. We're not always in robes, certainly not now. We're not always in a pulpit, certainly not now. What is life and having life more abundantly mean to you? Dr. Reed. Well, it was golf. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. But now I'm finding what I really enjoy when I can find someone who will put a mask on and we can just go out and have lunch. Okay. Mm -hmm. I love and just to sit. Different. Yes, yeah, social distancing and just sitting and having girl time. Okay. I need that. I know that. And I do too. And I love I, that. I need that. I need yeah. that. And I, I need it more now because I am by myself more. And it's 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 very hard. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Dr. Gwendolyn Goldsby Grant, who used to write for Essence Magazine, said, don't say I'm by myself, say I'm with myself. I'm and with myself. Have enjoy myself with myself, me, myself, and I. Dr. Liz, I know we've been to Florida and I know you're there. What do you do for fun? Are you working all the time or do you take advantage of the beaches and the sands of Florida? Well, you know, that's a great question because, I mean, I'm a nerd, you know, by nature, my default is to pick up a book and read. That's what I love to do. Mm -hmm. But since I do have a pool in my backyard, okay, I make sure that I go back there as much as I can. Definitely every Saturday self-care. And I remember something you taught us one time and you said, make an appointment with yourself and don't break it. Even if people call you mm -hmm. and say, hey, you know, can we see each other at 11 o'clock? You could actually say, I have an appointment already. Yes. And that's because it's an appointment with yourself. With you. That's right. I'm already committed. Mm -hmm. So I've heard of naughty by nature, but you're saying you're nerdy by nature. I love it. That could be a song. We could have a hit song by then. But you know, for this month, I rented an apartment. I'm not in my normal home because it has an indoor pool and I was missing swimming and I needed to swim to get my rhythm back. So I rented an apartment in a place that has an indoor pool 24 hours and I have swam every day for the last 30 days. I'm doing me. I am so fine and fabulous. You can't stop me. What do you do, Dr. Piola Hicks, for your fun? Uh, it's Dr. Sujay, I love to eat. I okay. love a good meal, honestly. And so going out to dinner pre-COVID, uh, my husband and I would go out to dinner every other Friday uh, to a non-chain um, restaurant, just finding, you know, good food, Italian food, uh, seafood and the like. And I actually love to laugh. So I try to find something every day that's funny. Um, you know, I'll just do funny things with yeah. my sister, you know, with her on the phone. And so just living life at its best and not taking everything so seriously. I and, love it. Uh, I yeah. love it. Yeah. I, when 9-11 happened, um, and this is the 20th anniversary year, but I went to comedy clubs because I had to balance out yeah. all the depression that I was dealing mm -hmm. with as a chaplain every day. So yeah, laugh a lot. Pastor Avery, Church of God in Christ, are you restricted to have fun? Yes, I love to have fun. And I agree with Pastor Hicks about eating because on Mondays after a long day at church, what I do is, I make me a peach cobbler uh -oh. and a sweet potato pie. Uh -oh. and, and I just indulge with um, fashion magazines and designing, um, home designing on YouTube, you know, and then we've been Zooming. Our family is so much fun. We've been Zooming, having family time. Great. And that's a lot of fun for me. We go back and we uh, research our ancestries and find out, you know, how far back we could go. So that's been a lot of fun for me during this. I can pandemic. see your fashion fabulous. I can see even the rims on your glasses. That's, but we have the two thinnest people who love to eat. And I'm right in the middle. I'm like, I love to eat too. So I'll take it. I'll take it. But we're going to be right back. You've been staying with Live with CJ. Stay with us. Subscribe. Give us a thumbs up and share. And we'll be right back. Don't go away. Hey, Black Women in Ministry. It's an exciting time, Black History Month and throughout the year, we're always gonna be Black Women in Ministry. So I wanna commend to you a book from Judson Press. It's called The Sister's Guide to Survive and Thrive in Ministry. 
words of wisdom from my 40 plus years in Christian ministry. Lessons I learned, things that I wish I could have had coming along the way. It's a short read, but it's a powerful read. And it has a foreword by Bishop Vashti McKenzie. So I'd love for you to get a copy of it. It's called The Sister's Guide to Survive and Thrive in Ministry. And it's also a sponsor for today. So thank you. And I hope you get it. And I hope it will be a blessing to you. So welcome back to Life with Sue J. And we're celebrating Black women in ministry. It's Women's History Month. It's Black History Month. We're Black and women all year long. So it doesn't matter. Whatever day you find this, we're here and we're all the way live. So what would you say to someone? There are a lot of leaders who feel they don't have the time to take and just do something fun. What would you say A plus B plus C equals success. What would your A and B and C be? What would you need to do? Liz, what would it be? What would be your formula that you'd recommend? Well, make the time, you know, make the time to do the things that you know will make you successful. Read about people that are successful. Look at the people that are, um, that you, you know, look at to, that are successful and, and emulate what they've been doing. Um, and, and of course, always um, make sure that you tap into your source, which is God, and make sure you find time to pray. He guides you and the things that you read will help you as well. Wonderful. Pastor Hicks, what would you say to someone who's struggling with, how do I get life balance? How do I really have fun this COVID? What would you say? Say to them, don't take life so seriously. I mean, I mean we, we need to take it serious, but we also need to understand that there's more to life sometimes than what we see right in front of us. So make sure that we are in good relationships. Uh, make sure that we are eating good food. Make sure we are exercising and just making sure that we are setting aside time for ourselves and not being consumed by always doing, but just being a woman of God and one that uh, that God is pouring into and also pouring some of that out to others. I love it. Okay, fashion fabulous, Pastor Avery. Come on, what would you say to someone who's sitting up there? What do they need to do to just enjoy life? Well, actually, I got this word from you, Ambassador Sujay, boundaries. Ooh. We must have boundaries. I am learning just for being with you guys that I have to say no sometimes. I just need to say no. I need to do time management. And it's okay. It's okay to do it because I'm trying to revitalize myself. So boundaries is the number one key for me. I love it. You're learning well. That's it. Now, Pastor Marge, you've been with me a whole lot. You know I have boundaries. I tell y'all, don't call me if it's after four on Friday or before 10 on Tuesday. You can be inspired as much as you want on Saturday night, but you will not hear from me until Tuesday after 10. So what are your boundaries? How do you have life and make it enjoyable? Well, one of the things I learned from you is Selah. Uh -oh. That's, you got to rest. I didn't like that in the beginning, but I love it now. Mm -hmm. And in doing that, I've learned to pray and having the sila and praying, I get rid of the anxiety. I love it. So now sila is the word that's used in the Psalms. It's used in the Bible 71 times, but it's after David has been playing his harp, after David's been singing, it just says pause. It's not even supposed to be spoken, sila, just rest. And so God's given the whole earth a sila, COVID. 19. Yes. And we're sorry, we express our condolences to those who lost loved ones. But for those of us still here, what lesson did you learn during COVID that you will take going forward in your life? And this is your last word, come out strong and tell us the ministry that you're serving as you give us this last answer. Pastor Marge, what's the name of your ministry? The name of the ministry is the St. Paul's Baptist Church in Conshohocken. And it is an elderly church and what I have learned out of this is to realize, that's my R word, that you can't do it all. You don't have to do it all. Uh -oh. And I won't do it all. Uh-oh, I love it. And you're okay. also the first female president moderator of First what? moderator of the Suburban Baptist Association of Southeastern Montgomery County. And that's comprised of about 20 churches. It's the first woman in the 102 year history. I love it. Congratulations to you. Thank Pastor you. Avery, tell us the name of your ministry and what lesson you've learned through COVID that for your life. Yes, the name of my ministry is Spirit and Truth Tabernacle Church of God in Christ. Amen. And we're located. Yes. 
We're located in Philly, Pennsylvania. Yeah. And what I've learned during this pandemic is just to be still mm. and listen to God. Just mm -hmm. go before him like never before. I've learned to be more disciplined in my life. And um, it's working. It is really working for me. I love it. I love it. Say the name of your church again, because I jumped all over it, but it's a good name. What's the name of your church again? The name of the church is Spirit and Truth Tabernacle Church of God in Christ. That'll give you a shout right there. Amen. And Pastor Piola, what's the name of your ministry and a lesson you've learned during COVID? My ministry is the Naugatuck United Methodist Church. And actually, I am in a cross-cultural appointment. And so this time during COVID has been really an eye-opening experience because I've gotten to know uh, people so much better than I knew them before. Some of the issues that have been raised, especially with racism and, and all different kinds of things, which we never would have talked about except in this season where we're slowing down and uh, hearing more issues that are before us. And so I'm learning really to... Uh, try to uh, uh, relate to people more on a personal level than, than binding people in a box and uh, learning to, to know their heart rather than just uh, stereotyping uh, them in any kind of a way. And so I'm, I'm really learning to slow down and to just know people's hearts. All right, so we know people's hearts. Today, you've heard the hearts and felt the hearts of four fabulous, I mean fabulous women who are part of the Real Black Women in Ministry Thrive Initiative. And we're so delighted that you've joined us. If you haven't done it already, subscribe, give us a thumbs up, share, and comment, please, right here on the YouTube page. We'd love to have you share with your networks. Final thought for the day. We've covered a whole lot, boundaries, life stuff, lessons learned. One last thought for the day that you can do in one or two sentences or less, Pastor Liz. I would say don't let the busyness and ministry that you do for God keep you from God. Oh, I love it. Pastor Marge. I would say to you, stay in prayer and whatever you do, don't get tired. Don't let the devil turn you around. Come too far Go to forward. come back now. Too far. Amen. Pastor Piola. Do not grow weary in well-doing, for in due season you will reap mm -hmm. if you faint not. Amen. That's another R word, reap. And Pastor Avery. I know the plans that I have for you, say of the Lord, uh -oh. for it's a peace and not evil to bring you to your expected end. Wow. And that's a fitting word for this end. Thank you so much. I don't know if you were expecting it, but God gave us a word to close on. Thank you so much for sharing with us. Until we see you again, God bless you, and may God really bless America. Amen. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Amen. God bless everyone.